I don't need to talk to you about Oudwood. You already know what it is. You've already heard the stories, the tales. There's many reviews of it online, on videos, even in books. So is there anything left to say about it? I think there is. If you look at how much I've used of it over only the past 14 months, and you consider that I've got nearly 150 bottles in my collection, there is no way that I can't say something about this. Oudwood, let's do it. So before we crack into this review, I just want to bring up this, because you guys are always pulling me up for shit, alright? This looks preposterous. I look as though I'm Peter Venkman trying to find the ghost of Christmas past and then ghost bust it. I understand that, I appreciate that, but we're really busy with uh, the production company that I've just started. We're literally in between shoots at the moment. I couldn't get a lapel mic, I'm so sorry, so you're gonna have to deal with me holding this. And who knows, we might even catch some ghosts. Let's get into the review. So, would you like this? Now, the terms masculine and feminine have been um, sort of questioned in recent years, and that's kind of bled through a little bit into fragrance. There's kind of a hot debate right now. Do we still need to classify fragrances as male or as feminine? Or is that quite a primitive way of looking at them? Especially now, seen as a lot of different styles are converging and we don't really, really know what's what anymore. Now, a great video for this is uh, Peter from Fragrance View. He did a phenomenal essay on this whole debate and I highly recommend that you watch it. Some really, really interesting points. Now, this video is not a political video. This isn't about social views or anything like that. I certainly don't have any answers. Uh, this is just a fragrance review. But with that being said, I wanted to mention that because to me, Oud Wood is a classic masculine fragrance and very specific as well. It's like a 1940s, 1950s, like Hollywood actor from that golden era. I'm talking about people like James Dean, um, Marlon freaking Brando, Greg Peck, Tony Curtis those guys. The images and the films that come to mind are things like Roman Holiday, A Streetcar Named Desire, A Rebel Without a Cause. Now this could be uh, on purpose. Uh, Oudwood's brother, Tobacco Oud, reminds me of uh, early 1950s crime film noir. This could be something that Tom Ford is doing on purpose. It wouldn't be uh, a million miles away from possibility. Or it could just be my passion and love for filmmaking bleeding through with these fragrances. Who knows? But the main point that I'm making is that this has got a very classic, quietly confident, uh, masculine tone. And that's one of the reasons to totally love it. It's very, very chill. Another reason to love Oudwood is because it's the absolute antithesis of men's fragrances being released today. You know the ones. Mostly, to my nose, uh, most ma like modern male fragrances have two ingredients. Icing sugar and water, right? And if you want to be a bit, if you want to spice it up just a little bit, throw Ambroxan in there. It's crazy. So this is completely different. This is a calm, spicy, sexy, sensual wood that's quietly confident, very chill, doesn't have to shout about it, doesn't have to be loud. Completely different from all those modern fragrances now that feel as though they're like, really like trying to shout, trying to scream, trying to grab the person's attention. This fragrance, Oudwood, doesn't need to do that. It doesn't need to do that. It's chill, it's calm. So if that sounds cool, if that sounds interesting to you, then let's keep going, let's crack into the presentation. So you know what the Tom Ford Private Blends look like, okay? If you don't know what the Tom Ford Private Blends look like, and I have to tell you what they look like, or give you an opinion, then look, you're not even a fragrance collector at this point. Now the weird thing with them is I actually prefer the 50 mil milliliter bottle designs over the 100. I think the 100s look a little bit clunky. I think the 50s look a lot smarter. It's a really sleek design, really eye-catching, very straightforward, very simple, kind of like a suit which Tom Ford really loves. He loves that kind of simplistic, straightforward vibe. Um, and with the Oud collection, it has that kind of gray tone uh, with the silver, and I think that really adds uh, to it rather than takes away. I think they're really cool look very good. I haven't got too much to complain. The only complaint that you could really give is they look a little bit too simple. They aren't 
quite as maybe eye-catching as some of the other fragrances that come out, but I'm happy to give the presentation a very straightforward, a very simple four out of five. Unfortunately, as you can see, I'm really running out of the 50 mil and I'm probably gonna have to uh, buy the uglier 100 mil uh, in the end, but uh, I've got to suffer for my art, I guess. So four out of five, presentation. <clears throat> Hello friends, George here. I know I'm there as well, but I'm also here, in your mind. No. So listen, I managed to record my worst audio ever. What? Even worse than that fucking top 10 autumn fragrance list of 2017, which you put 2018 in the title, George? Am I number one? When I first heard of this! Yes. In fact, here's a sample. Makes it uh, smell good. Uh, in the UK, we had uh, something called Bounce. I find it quite remarkable that with all my skill sets, razzmatazz, and stunning cinematics that I've brought into this YouTube fragrance community, I still can't get my head around the concept that wind is an actual thing and that microphones need protection from it. In fact, this sentiment goes completely over my head as poetically played out in this clip. Oh, right, yeah, you would be windy, wouldn't you? Jesus. Stop right. shouting at the elements, George. Okay. Anyway, sound has sometimes been an issue ever since I started making videos when I was about four years old or whatever. Anyways, I apologise, so here's the brand new scent section with some added bits just for you. Yes, you, because you're my favourite. Okay, so the scent with Oudwood. First off, do not, and I mean do not, spray this on a card when testing. You shouldn't do that with fragrances in general. But with this fragrance especially, I find you're going to have a bad day. I did this with Oudwood, first time sampling it, I sprayed it onto a card, and I hated it because on the card, honestly, it smells like cold mushroom soup. You need to have this on your skin when testing it, and for a relevant pop culture reference, it's kind of like the symbiote with Venom, it needs to bond with you. Okay, that sounds a bit weird and intense, but as in, it needs the warmth of your skin and your body to create what Oudwood becomes and what makes it so great and wonderful. I'd say, and this has actually been said before on a couple of reviews, uh, Oudwood has one of the weakest openings probably in the game and especially in art market, retail orientated niche fragrances and I'm talking like Tom Ford, Creed, Dior Private Blend, all of that kind of stuff. And I'd say that that's very unusual, very unusual because a lot of these companies and a lot of these houses are kind of instructed, or they instruct their perfumiers to give an extraordinarily pleasant opening, usually with citrus or aldehydes, that's going to give, um, you know, the consumer passing by, you know, they'll spray it on the card and they'll go, oh right, that smells like citrus, I know what that is, and all that kind of stuff, and it, it, it draws them in. Oudwood doesn't really have that, it kind of is what it is, but that's another reason to like it. When you put this on your wrist or neck, uh, everything changes. Of course, these are the warmest parts of the body because they're pulse points. Uh, it warms up and it has this sexy, woody, green texture. So you definitely get the full brunt of the oud and the wood part of oud wood. And what I really do like about this is that you've got the oud, you've got the wood, you've got the darker textures really coming in strong, but it's smooth. And I always admire any perfumier that can have really harsh elements but really, really have a, a smooth surface to that. There's another element in here to me that keeps everything grounded. Um, it's subtle, but it just works, and that is soap. Yes, soap or linen. Now, it's not anything insane, but it's absolutely there. It's balanced well and keeps this fragrance from being too extreme in the direction of woody. Now, this is probably why I've been wearing it so much, because it's surprisingly versatile, almost paradoxical. Hey, you want to smell clean and crisp? Well, oud wood. Hey, you want to smell tough, woody, and mysterious? The polar opposite? Well, guess what? Oud wood still qualifies. Hey, uh, want to smell kind of sexy, warm, and affectionate? Well, sir, guess what? <laughs> you know, but do you also want to smell as though you're hard to get aloof and a little bit cold at times? Well, guess what, sir? Um, oud wood is there for you in all realms. In philosophy, they say that masculinity is defined as two energies of completely different forces. One is to protect, nurture, and be affectionate. The other is to destroy, conquer, and dominate. These two elements on their own can be disastrous in their own way, but if you put them together, 
you have true harmony. And in my opinion, oud wood does that. As we dry down, it just gets smoother and smoother, and I cannot emphasize this enough. Your skin is doing a lot of the work. The warmth of your skin makes this sexy. This is when you start to get the compliments. People are enjoying it, you're enjoying it. It becomes a little addictive. At this point, me personally, I get hints of chocolate. Maybe a bit of sugar, but this could be extremely subjective. Don't expect that when you wear it, but I kind of get it sometimes. So it covers so many bases and that's why you can wear it so easily and it's quite amazing. So in summary, warm, cozy and sensual yet mysterious, engaging and disciplined. This one is getting one of the easiest 5 out of 5s I've ever given as a fragrance apprentice when it comes to scent. Now back to me on location to talk about the projection. So you know, I always find myself with these fragrances, I, I didn't want this to be like this, right? I always find with the fragrances that I like is that the performance is very weirdly inconsistent and this is no different. The projection is kind of like average, it's kind of moderate, but the longevity, very strong. We'll get to that in a second. But the projection for me, kind of consistently a three out of five. It's a little bit disappointing, this is a Tom Ford. It's 200 quid, you'd think that it'd be a little bit better, but no, you get to about there, people have to come into your space, people have to be around you for them to smell it, but that's okay. It does kind of go with the subtle nature of the fragrance. So for me, projection on my skin, you gotta test out yourself, remember, but for me, a three out of five. So although the projection is a three out of five, it's consistently like that for a very long period of time. On my skin, longevity is 10 hours. Now, the only issue with that that I see is that after five hours, the scent gets very linear. And that's fragrance nerd speak for, it basically stays the same. Um, so what that does is your nose or your olfactory system gets very used to the fragrance. This is something that's very common. I've mentioned this in previous videos before. So you get used to it and you can't smell it and you're starting to think to yourself, is this even projecting off of me? Can other people smell you? Trust me, they can. It's quite an unusual fragrance in the fact that it lasts such a long time, even though the projection and the scent cloud is kind of average. So that's what's very unique about it. But overall, for the longevity, I'd give it a five out of five. So as you can see, there's many different reasons to love Tom Ford Oud Wood. The main thing that I want to sell you on is that this is the quiet, confident gentleman who doesn't need to shout, who doesn't need to be boisterous. He's really, really chill and you will stand out because of that. Whilst other fragrances are trying to grab somebody's attention, you know, they're trying to scream and shout and go, look at me. This one holds your attention. It's very calm, very sexy in that way. Now. The final thing that can usually sort of uh, make me decide on a final rating is money. And there's many different categories uh, financially. There's many different sort of subsects. With Tom Ford, Tom Ford's pretty liberal. They're pretty good. So you go from like, you know, quite cheap, quite straightforward to a little bit expensive, a little bit sort of liberal with price. And then you go all the way up to Creed and their factor is stop taking the piss. But that's another story for a different video. Tom Ford can be quite liberal with their prices and you can get them on discounters if you know where to look. So this retail is about 145 pounds, but I can get this if I know where to look for about 90 to 100, maybe 110 pounds. So that's okay. And you know what, is it worth it? Yes, completely worth it. 100 mil, a little bit harder to get, anything below 200, but hey, I think it's fine. It is of that quality. So I'm gonna give Tom Ford Oud Wood a wholesome, full five out of five. It deserves it. It is worth all hype, all the excitement. You can believe that. Anyway, it's been lovely seeing you, hasn't it? I've loved seeing you, it's been great. But I've gotta go, I've gotta run. Started a film production company. I don't know if it's worth it. I don't know if it's gonna work out, but I've done it, gotta keep going, all right? But I will be seeing you. The Fragrance Apprentice will be back. 
for season five next year, all right? So you kids, you look after yourself. I've got to go and, um, and Merry Christmas for when it comes. Yes, anyway, goodbye. <laughs>